This is a complicated decision. We just got it here. It's an opinion from Chief Justice John Roberts finding that former presidents are entitled to absolute immunity for official acts, but not for unofficial acts. So what does that translate to? Well, this is something we saw that was sort of signaled in oral argument, because what this means is that the former president cannot be prosecuted for anything that was officially part of his job when he was in office. And that's significant because even his own lawyers uh, conceded during oral argument that not everything that is alleged in this indictment was an official act. So now the question is, what does the special counsel do here? He could potentially try to call down this indictment to a more narrow one, just focusing on unofficial acts, and then try to proceed with this case. Still an open question, though, about whether even a slimmed down case could go before the election. Three reasons for that. One, the judge overseeing this, Judge Tanya Chutkin, she has a signal that the lawyers should get some lead time on this. I mean, we're a couple months out from the election. The idea of putting uh, the candidate, the Republican candidate for the presidency on, on trial where he would have to be in court months, weeks before the election, that's something that would likely have us right here again before the Supreme Court. Also, the attorney general unlikely to allow something to go ahead that quickly, um, but we'll see. But right now, this decision, uh, the Supreme Court finding that former presidents are entitled to absolute immunity for official acts, but not for unofficial acts. Uh, this opinion uh, very, very long. It's going to take us a while to get through everything. We have here a landmark decision in American history as it relates to presidential power that will define the limits of that power for generations to come. The divided court now deciding here that the former president does enjoy some immunity. There is a dispute about how much and to what extent, but what we do know is that this case is now going to go back to the lower court for further delinea delineation about what is immune, what is official, and what is not. The chief justice here accusing his uh, liberal colleagues of striking a chilling ch tone that's disproportionate to what the court actually does. So you see a dispute here with the liberals saying that he's they've gone much further than the conservatives think that they actually have gone here. But they are saying that immunity extends to official discussions between the president and his attorney general. But they're going to put it back in the hands of the lower court, Judge Chutkin, the trial court, to determine what extent Trump's remaining alleged conduct is entitled to immunity. Remember, this is the case where he's been accused of trying to overturn the last election through lies and through fraud. He has resisted that and obviously denied any wrongdoing and has said that everything he did was completely within presidential powers and that if you don't offer immunity to presidents, then they'll just essentially be handicapped into not being able to sure. do their job, right? That there will just be a series of recriminations with the next administration prosecuting the former one. Again, the conservative majority here saying the president does enjoy some immunity, but there is no immunity when it involves unofficial acts. So say the president committed a crime. Say he killed his wife or he robbed a bank while he was in office. Yeah. That's not immune. But anything having to do with things that he was doing as president, as part of those official duties, the conservative majority thinks that is immune. And therefore, it now has to go back to the lower court for more process, which means more delays, which really is going to have a big effect on timing of this case to be able to get completed and finished before the November election. It sounds as if there's little to no chance that this case uh, sees a courtroom before the November election. I, I need to go through it. It's a lengthy opinion. I want to see what they say, if anything, about timing, because as of right now, I don't see them acting, acting with any alacrity. I don't see the urgency here quite yet, but we're going to work our way through and see if they address that in some respect. And I'm sure the liberal, uh, the liberal branch of this, I'm sure, has something to say about timing. Danny Savalos,